have a panel discussion video for you all. I am the Mercer Chapter President of Christian Pharmacist Fellowship International, and I invited my professors as well as a PGY1 resident to talk on the pharmacy job market saturation. Now, as a believer, we have a different outlook on what's going on in the world, so please get your notebook, get your pen, and get these gems, okay? This panel was really edifying and really encouraging, so if you have a passion for pharmacy, or say you, you're trying to go for another job and you're a believer, this will still be a beneficial... Beneficial. This will still be a beneficial video for you, so yeah, stay tuned. Bye! Well, I'll say, um, and I think this is... You know, well, I'll just say what I'm going to say. Um, I, I think that's actually uh, a very great outlook. Um, I think uh, it's all about your perspective. It's all about your outlook on things. So if you listen to uh, things in the media or just things that you come across and you adopt that perspective, then you might think that, oh yeah, everything is bad. Like it's really, really bad. The market's bad. I, I choose not to look at things that way. I think you have to be careful um, whose perspective you're adopting. So the way I choose to look at it is that I think it's a very exciting time for pharmacy and for pharmacists. Um, in fact, you know, we're in a, a situation now where we have the opportunity to really create what we want people to think of pharmacists as being. Um, you guys are in pharmacy school. Um, God's, uh, uh, I assume, led you here. Hopefully you were listening to the Lord and He's guided you to this point. He's gifted you. Um, and yeah, we're made for challenges. God created us for challenges. God didn't create us for easy things. You know, mm -hmm. you think about the story of Daniel. That was a, not an easy time. If you had asked the you know, media or whatever at that time, so this is a really bad time to be a whatever, follower of Christ or follower of God. But Daniel was born for that moment, in fact. It was wonderful, actually. He, he found his legacy in that. We wouldn't even be talking about Daniel if he wasn't in that moment. So to me, I don't look at it as, oh, I, you know, it's rough, like, oh, uh, I'm not getting paid enough. Uh, I don't have a lot of opportunities, or oh, what, what am I going to do? I look at it as, um, what is God saying now? What, 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 is, what, is it that, what is the dream that's in me that I want to create? So for me, I look at it for our profession is, here's a chance for us as people of God who are gifted and, and know Him to contribute to the transformation of pharmacy. And instead of thinking about it as, which again, I know you, you want a job, but I don't think I would look at it, and I don't look at it that way, that, oh, it's a tough market. I look at it as it's an exciting opportunity. What is it going to be like? <coughs> what am I going to do to position myself to contribute to that change that's occurring? Okay, I will, I will just add and say that, um, just like I said to you guys last week, don't forget that we have a physical side and a spiritual side. Mm -hmm. And so God expects us to be smart, you know, to, to take advantage. <laughs> There's a scripture about um, Jesus mentioned somebody was a shrewd um, um, businessman, you know. And um, so all the things that you need to do, if you have to um, do add some graduate program, do residency, all those things that you talk about. Make sure that your resume, resume is, is, is great and all that stuff. That's our fiscal side. God expects us to do that, right? But don't always forget that our spiritual side is superior to the physical side. What I mean is that um, we are spiritual beings. Our Father owns the whole world, okay? Uh, that, that is more powerful than the, um, the president or whoever it is meaning that he takes care of me. That's why he says that be anxious for nothing, okay? Anxiety, it comes when you are, you are not even out of school and you can't even sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you are thinking about what if I don't get a job? What if I don't get, what if my salary is low? No, 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 no. God is way ahead of you. He's mm -hmm. thinking about it. He, he loves you. He, he gives us the best, right? But if you're in a mindset, the reason why people get anxious is because you have a preset 
oh, I want to finish and then I want to be <coughs> a clinical pharmacist in Emory, right? And I understand there's no positions there, so I'm freaking out. What if I go out and I don't get it, right? I don't think that way. It's not what I do that defines me, right? It is my work with him, my relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord, that is what defines me. Mm -hmm. And so once I put my trust in him, he is the one who puts me where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter. I could be the CEO of um, the company I'm joining next week. And in five years, you guys will hear, oh, he's the new CEO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the next time you, you hear, um, I'm somewhere in Walgreens or something. It doesn't matter, right? What matters is that what is my work with him? Mm -hmm. And so everywhere I see myself, I'm not, my excitement and my joy is not defined by my job. Mm -hmm. My excitement is defined by my work with him. Am I doing what he wants me to do? Am I influencing the, the, the people around me? Mm -hmm. He will take care of me, right? I don't need a, a million dollars to be happy. But if you give me a million dollars, I'll take it. And then if you have a set mind, I have to be like that. Right? What well, if that's not what God wants you to be? Right? Because I don't live for myself, but I live for Him, then I don't get worried. Right? I leave everything into His hands. If I am interested in something special, it brings anxiety. But if I'm interested in the God who gives everything, then my anxiety goes away. So that's what I want to say about that one. Thank you. that we're actually at an advantage because we know that the market is saturated and we can prepare for it. Mm -hmm. um, for example, at Redmond, there was an open position and there was over 30 pharmacists that applied. Um, that's quite a lot for one position mm -hmm. in a pharmacy, in a hospital pharmacy that's not even in Atlanta. And so that can bring anxiety, but they only interviewed six people. And the reason is, is because of their, their application, their CV, their, their cover letters. So just preparing for that, knowing that before they even see you, they're going to look at your application. And how can you make your application the best that it can be? How can you make it as competitive as can be? Your cover letter can really show your personality and the things that you have done. And so you may want to prepare for that and think of some of the things that you can get to make you stand out of the crowd and to get the position that you would like that's close to your heart. Um, and in your interview, obviously, be who you are. Be comfortable. Um, knowing that it is an, an open or a saturated market, be open to different things that you thought, like Dr. Fiesa said, you thought might not have interested you at first. But you can also work really hard to what is close to your heart. If you really know that you want to work in pediatrics, make those moves. Um, do that elective, get that rotation, sit down and talk, network. That's always very helpful. Um, and then you might find out that you didn't, you're not, your heart is not in pediatrics. <laughs> um, because that's what happened to me. So, um, so don't get upset if those don't come through for you. Know that sometimes life throws something at you and you find out what I thought I wanted to do is not really where my heart is. So. My question is, how did you incorporate faith in your job search or residency or pursuit? So I think about like when I was taking the PCAT, I fasted for five days, turned my phone off. But like how did y'all go about like, um, in terms of scripture that you read to encourage you as you were going forth, you know, did you like hear the voice of God saying like, this is the place for you? How did you incorporate your faith into your job search? So I'd say like for me, uh, coming to Mercer, which is 10 years ago, I guess now, but um, I was actually, I actually had I heard a message at church where the pastor was talking uh, about, you know, what is it that you're passionate about? He was kind of actually even talking, he wasn't talking about your job, but he was, it really related to that. Uh, what is it that really drives you? What are you passionate about? He was talking about this idea that, you know, God has created us all with a certain drive. 
to, to accomplish something or do something and are you doing that and at the time I was actually working for a pharmaceutical company and I, I liked the job um, and there was a lot of positive things about the job uh, but I wouldn't necessarily say I was passionate about it. It was just a really, really good job. The pay was good, it was flexible, and my boss was fantastic. But I, I was kind of like, yeah, I don't think I'm really passionate. And so actually I was driving home from church and praying, uh, with, you know, talking to the Lord about this, and um, I felt like he asked me, well, what are you passionate about? And um, you know, sometimes I think, kind of like Dr. Piazza was saying, sometimes we put like ourselves in a box. Like we, we only allow God to do certain things because we say, uh, I only have faith to believe this. So we actually put God in a box. And so I felt like the Lord says, told me like, well, remove your box. You know, just, if you didn't have to worry about anything, what would you want to do? And so I was like, you know what? I wish I could teach. Like, I really <laughs> like teaching. And if I could do anything, I would want to teach. And I remember in this message, um, the pastor, he, he shared a phrase that has always stuck with me. And it, it, the phrase was, uh, pursue your passion and God will take care of the provision. Mm -hmm. But if you pursue provision, God is not going to supply passion for that. So, so I was like, you know, I just threw it out to the Lord. I just said, Lord, and I had this prayer. And it's like, you know, Jesus talks about walking in faith and, you know, having faith. God, and, and, you know, in Hebrews it talks about God is pleased by faith. Without faith it is impossible to please God. And so I just said to the Lord, Lord, I... I believe you can create an opportunity for me to do what I'm passionate about, which is to teach. I want to do that. And I just threw it out there. And um, that's the thing about our God is uh, supernatural. And I think we have to really, um, and this is a great environment where we can really um, activate our faith and really step into what we say we believe. You believe God is a supernatural God, that He has no limits, that He does provide for us. And so I just threw it out there and, you know, I won't go through the whole story, but literally about a week after that, I got a call actually from, I don't know if some of you may have worked with Dr. Advani when he was here, but actually Dr. Advani is the one who called me and told me, hey, about this position and it just, you know, happened. So. Um, so yeah, I think, um, getting back to your question, I think, yeah, I think it is a matter of uh, faith. It's, I think it's really like Dr. Piazza was saying, what's your walk with the Lord like? It's like, um, you, your job is a big part of what you do. It's not who you are, but, you know, who you are influences what you do. And I think, um, I would say, you know, it was prayer and it was really um, going to God in faith and, and being open to, to what He want, want me to do, so. And my name is Samuel, so I wish I could tell you that uh, <laughs> um, I was lying down and then the voice <laughs> <laughs> And God still speaks that way at times, right? But um, most often he, he uses His revealed word. Right? He says so much in his word that um, I don't need to hear his voice every morning audibly. Okay? I still hear it through uh, my spirit. But um, just have the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible talks about. Right? If you have the mind of Christ, I don't have to get up in the morning and, and decide, Oh, will God want me to wear a blue <laughs> shirt today or not? <laughs> right? Because um, I, if I think about him, I have um, his worldview how he says things. And so most of the times I will do a lot of things that way. And it says, um, my sheep knows my voice, right? There are certain things that when you're going to do, you check, get a check in your spirit that mm -mm, this, is, this is not where you're supposed to go. So God still guides us that way. So having your, your, your life aligned with him, he will guide you, right? So there are times that there are certain jobs that you realize that ah, I don't have interest here. 
you know, it's not many at the glance in a man's heart, but it's the counsel of the Lord that stands. So God still counsels us through the, our spirit man, you know. So all of us are sitting here, and none of them had interest in going to Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just came from nowhere, and, and boom, I'm going there, right? And so the point I'm trying to make is that he, even before you make a move, he has made several moves ahead of you, right? Before something was born, God had already planned that he was going to kill so many Philistines, right? So God has certain things put in place. And so just trust him, pray, and listen to the still, <coughs> small voice within you. And always question why you are doing what you are doing. That helps you to know whether you are in his will. You know, if, if, if the whole thing is selfish, if the whole thing will not advance his um, kingdom, whatever it is, let that one guide you. Otherwise, you make a lot of missteps in life. But if I'm doing it and his will is guiding me, I will very likely not go wrong. So that's um, my advice when it comes to that one. I wish I could say that I was perfect and that I always look to God for everything and that God and I are always extremely close and that we're always, I'm always, always talking to him, but thank God he loves me and he knows I get distracted. He knows that life sometimes in this world sometimes turns my head away from him and he praises me. He's always been there for me to say, come back to me. Um, and CPMI was one of those ways. Um, pharmacy school is a big distractor. It's a lot of anxiety, a lot of you need to work harder, you need to network more, you need to make those grades, um, do those commuting. I have to commute, by the way. Um, and when I was asked to be the president of CPFI, I, I kind of laughed a little. I was like, <laughs> you know, I live an hour away, you know, I'm a mother, and I really need to focus on my grades. I'd like to get that scholarship again. And I just kept having people come up to me saying, you should become the president. And I was like, I'm not a good leader. I'm not good at talking to people. I'm not good at telling people what to do. I, I don't think this is for me. I'm, I'm sorry. And I became president. And I'm not gonna say I was a good president or a great president, but wow, it really kept my focus on God. I had to stop and make the weekly PowerPoints and look up scriptures and pray and ask, please God, let them see you and not me. <laughs> and that is awesome that you are all doing this. Please keep God first. It is so easy to have your head turned by this world, including at work, including in your residency. Just remember, keep him first. That's beautiful. Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I would just say it's, you know, um, I mean, it's kind of like what Dr. Piazza was saying, you know, it's, some level, you don't really worry about things, you know. I, I, I think um, I've been, I, and I told Joy this, I've been listening to this guy, uh, Dan Mahler, who's a pastor from, actually, he's from Pennsylvania. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, he's been talking a lot about how we let circumstances dictate, like, our level of faith. Like, you know, and, and he was basically saying this thing, like, if you're only doing as good as your circumstances, then that's not faith. And so, to me, security in Christ is living in the, the reality of what Christ has accomplished. And so, to me, Jesus, you know, He came to restore us to our original intent. You know, God created Adam and Eve to be reflections of him in the world and Christ came and restored us to that and also restored us to perfect fellowship with the Father and so to me that's what security in Christ is if if I am now created to perfectly reflect my Father and I have perfect fellowship with him no matter what whether I feel like I'm close to him or not whether I'm doing what I was supposed to do or not but I'm always connected to Him because His Spirit lives in me. It's the awareness of that is the reality. Whether we recognize that, whether we even believe that, 
if that is the reality of what Christ has done for us. And so, to me, to be secure in Christ is to uh, live in that, to, for us personally, to have the awareness of that is, that is what's happened and that is the life we're living. And just embrace that. Yeah, sorry. So, I just looked at the time, so I'm going to actually have one response for the next two questions. Um, sorry guys, oh, she has more time. But, um, how, do you, how do you remain in Christ and you know, resemble Christ in environments that are considered toxic? And that you know your employer isn't necessarily um, caring towards you. It's just kind of do do do. Like, how do you continue to reflect Christ in that? <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> yeah. So um, once once you get to know that um, the earth is the laws and everything. You know, I, I, I was going to mention from, from, from uh, his, co uh, his comment that um, seek you first, his kingdom and everything else shall be added unto you. That's always the first thing, right? Once you make him that, your security is in Christ, right? Your security is not in a bank account, it's not in your job, it's not in anything, right? It's all in, in Christ. So there are certain times that you will find yourself in a very toxic environment. And maybe God put you there for a reason. Okay, maybe because of you, the Bible says that we are the salt of this earth, right? Because of us, the, the earth is not um, decaying faster than it's already doing. Right? <laughs> Can you imagine Christians are taking out? <laughs> the world would be crazy. Yeah. So, um, we are the salt of the earth and all that stuff. Our security is in Christ. He can put you in a certain situation for a reason, mm -hmm. right? So, once you have that mindset, that I don't own myself. And so maybe where you are, that is where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to influence one person, influence it, and maybe the whole place will change. That becomes um, the strength that you have to keep going on. There are times too that it could be a, a sign to you that God doesn't want you there anymore. Maybe he's hoping another opportunity for you somewhere else, right? Because um, let's face it, uh, Jesus has given us the, the, the mission to win souls to Christ. So if I have to stay with one person for five years just to win that person and it's not working, and there are thousands of people out there who also needs to go to heaven, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Why will I have to spend all my time in an area where it's, it's like church. I can't, I can't stay in a church where it is stagnant. It's not um, stirring my spirit to do more for Christ. I can't, I can't live there. At the same time, maybe I'm there to um, bring fire to the place, right? So it all depends on how you see it. So toxic or not toxic, there are certain situations where it's not worth staying in it if it will take away your faith, mm -hmm. right? But there are certain situations too that if you have what it takes to bring change, just stay there and, and maybe the Lord brought you there for, for that, such a purpose. Mm -hmm. And um, last question, <coughs> what advice would you have for us to practically place our trust in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you practically place your trust in the Lord. Um, going back to one of my favorite Bible verses, even if you don't get the residency, even if you don't get your pharmacy license, even if you don't get a job, he's still there for you. Mm. He's still going to guide you. Maybe he has some plans for you that you can't see yet. Just know that he has hope for you. He has a future for you, and you are in his heart. Even if you're not saved from that fire, even if you don't get that job, trust in the Lord. Mm. Thank you guys so much. I just have a quick exhortation. So our theme this year is from Jeremiah 17, 7 to 8. And, um, you know, y'all see, like, blessed him Plus his trust in the Lord, right? Um, blesses him who puts his trust in the Lord. If you read, read down, it says, And will not fear when the heat comes, but its leaves will be green and moist. And they will not be anxious and concerned in the year of drought, nor stop bearing fruit. Like, that is our, um, you know, stance, is that we're going to be secure in Christ, right? But when we read the Bible, we can't just read one part without reading the other. So if you go to the next, or the previous 
verse before, um, God is talking about this. You see, curse is the man who puts his trust, you know, in and relies on mankind. A lot of times when we're in this pharmacy program, we tend to think that, you know, man is going to make a way for us. And that's not how it, you know, that's not how it works. It's simply putting your trust in God. So you don't want to make man an idol. You don't want to make an organization an idol. You don't want to make internship, you know, residency. You don't want to make those idols, right? You want to put your trust in God. And just to share a part of, like, my testimony, um, this summer I wanted to be at an internship, uh, a pediatric one at Johns Hopkins. You know, I literally, would, I spent all night, like, working on my application and stuff to 5 a.m. If I had to spend time with the Lord, the Lord would show me, like, ooh, you making this an idol. Um, got an interview, interview went trash, and I'm actually really good at interviews, so it's like, <laughs> um, but I believe the Lord let that happen so that I would have the opportunity to um, do mission work over the summer in the Dominican Republic, and out of that, I was able to apply everything that I've learned so far in pharmacy school in terms of taking Spanish for pharmacists, you know, the pediatric pharmacotherapy elective, um, I even now have a publication, you know, coming out for um, Christianity and Pharmacy Journal that CPFI has. And it's like, had I went with my plans and did things my way and put my trust in man or, you know, being at a accredited university with a great name for an internship, you know, it would have taken glory away from God. So it's so important for us to submit um, to God and follow him and trust in him for um, everything. And I'm going to read this last scripture. Um, I'm going to actually read verse 12 for the sake of time. Well, actually from 11. For the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows grace and favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Oh, bless, oh Lord of hosts, how blessed and greatly favored is the man who trusts in you, believing in you, relying on you, and committing himself to you with confident hope and expectation. Blessed and greatly favored is the man who trusts in you. So favor comes from the Lord. Blessings come from the Lord. I'm not saying don't make good grades. I'm not saying don't do research. I'm not saying don't do internships. But keep God first. Um, that's really, you know, my heart to spread out and our faith for this year and the years to come because it's not going to change uh, the fact that our security is in Christ. It's not in our degrees. You know, like she said, people don't get jobs. It's not in our jobs because people get laid off, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we're just going to sing. Um, this